What's up everybody, welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the Psalms. Here we are on day 18, the second time around, Psalm 18. And Psalm 18 is one of my favorite Psalms. Uh, Psalm 18 tells, tells us so much, there's so much in here. We see the resurrection, we see the beginning of the wrath of God, and we see that the rapture and resurrection is pre-trib. And there's also the gathering together at the end. And those uh, who died during the tribulation time are going to be raised at the end as well to complete the harvest. That's the grapes. But the main harvest, because it's based on the harvest cycles, the main harvest happens at the beginning. And then the gleanings, the corners, the grapes happen at the end but the main resurrection and rapture the resurrection of all the believers for the past 2,000 years and actually uh, beyond that unless I have a incorrect understanding on um, yeah even I mean some people believe that the The dead that were raised at the time of Jesus, uh, after his resurrection, were actually the people from all the time, the 4,000 years before him. But I'm not so sure about that. But at least, at the very least, all the believers in the last 2,000 years, all the ones right with God, are going to be raised. That's the main harvest. That along with the rapture of the wise virgins happens at the beginning and then at the end. The grapes who had to go through the tribulation time and those who came to faith during the tribulation time will be raised as well to complete the harvest, to complete the first resurrection. Didn't really plan on getting into all that but let's go ahead and go through the scripture psalm 18 for the choir director a psalm of david the servant of yahuwah who spoke to yahuwah the words of this song in the day that yahuwah delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of saul and he said i love you O yahuwah my strength Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Hallelujah. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. Hallelujah. My shield and the horn of my salvation. And we know horn represents power or strength. And this goes back to the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. Which in the pictograph, in the original language uh, was pictograph, and the A, the Aleph, was represented by an ox head. And, and of course, here on the ox head, uh, we have the horns. And uh, the ox head meaning strength and power my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold hallelujah I call upon Yahuwah who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies hallelujah praise his name the cords of death encompasses me encompass me and the Cord, word for cord, it can mean band, coast, company, cord, destruction, line, lot, ropes. The ropes or cords of death encompass me, and the torrents of ungodliness terrify me. And torrents is a brook, flood river stream valley 
different translations for this uh, for torrents. And we also see over here in Psalm, I mean, uh, 2 Samuel 22, because 2 Samuel 22, we get the same thing as here in Psalm 18. And both were of David. And it, and it reads almost the same. I call upon Yahuwah. This is out of 2 Samuel 22. Who is worthy to be praised, and I am safe from my enemies. For the waves of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. Or the torrents of Belial, which is a uh, tied to Satan, I believe. And we're going to see here the end time captivity of believers as well. Because it's all part of the same picture. The cords of death encompass me. The torrents and water represents people of ungodliness terrify me. Or were assailing or terrifying me. And Second Samuel 22 said, uh, and let me just pull it right back up. torrents of ungodliness overwhelmed me the cords of Sheol surrounded me the snares of death confronted me in my distress I called upon Yahuwah and I cried to my God for help he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry for help before him came into his ears. So we see the captivity here. The end time captivity of the believers. And when the call goes out, when a cry for help goes out, God delivers. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry for help came before him into his ears. Then the earth shook and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. So that's the sixth seal and the beginning of the wrath of God. Because the wrath begins at the sixth seal on the first day. I looked when he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth, as a fig tree cast its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Then the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the commanders, and the rich, and the strong, and every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? It's the same earthquake that we see here in Isaiah 24. Then it will be that he who flees the report of the disaster will fall into the pit. And he who cl climbs out of the pit will be caught in the snare. For the windows above are open. That's when heaven is open. And the foundations of the earth shake. The earth is broken asunder. The earth is split through. The earth is shaken violently. The earth reels to and fro like a drunkard. It totters like a shack, for its transgression is heavy upon it, and it will fall, never to rise again. Smoke went up out of his nostrils, and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it, and that's the coals, the coals of fire that we see here in Revelation chapter 8. Another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden, holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him, so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. 
Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And that's the coals of fire. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. And we're going to see all that here in a second. We already saw the earthquake. That's the six seal earthquake. Because, uh... And we also see, it's all tied together. The hail also. We see the hail here in Psalm 18. And that's the first trumpet. The first sounded and there came hail and fire mixed with blood. And they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up. And a third of the trees were burned up. And all the green grass was burned up. Smoke went up out of his nostrils. And fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. See, Psalm 18 shows us how all this happens at once. The resurrection, the sixth seal, the first couple trumpets. He bowed the heavens also and came down with thick darkness under his feet. And that's when Jesus comes on the clouds. He rode upon a cherub and flew and sped upon the wings of the wind. And we read in Hebrews 1, 7, and of, it, of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds. He rode upon a cherub and flew, and that would be what we see with the first, uh, with the first seal. And then when I saw that the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with the voice of thunder, Come, and I looked, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. So he rides on the cherub that's, that, that also rides on the white horse. Because the horsemen are the cherubim, the four living creatures. And we see this in Zechariah chapter 6. Now I lifted, my, lifted up my eyes again and looked, and behold, four chariots were coming forth from between the two mountains. And the mountains were bronze mountains. With the first chariot, there were red horses. So riding in the chariots are going to be the four living creatures. They're the horsemen. With the first chariot were red horses. With the second chariot, black horses. With the third chariot, white horses. And with the fourth chariot, strong dappled horses. Then I spoke and I said to the angel who was speaking with me, What are these, my lord? The angel replied to me, These are the four spirits of heaven going forth after standing before the Lord of all the earth. With one of which the black horses are going forth to the north country. So the four living creatures are going with the horses. With one of which the black horses are going forth toward the north country. And the white ones go forth after them. While the dappled go to the south country. And that's why we see the four living creatures. Being the ones that are uh, saying come. Calling call the horses to like come, let's go. When I saw the lamb broke one of the seven seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice of thunder, Come. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. And another, a red horse, went out. And we read in uh, Revelation chapter 4. Out from the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. But the seven lamps are also the churches. The seven spirits, that's the Holy Spirit that fills the church. That's the oil. So the those with the oil, the believers with the oil, are going to be caught up to heaven at this time, as we see. This is another... Uh, Proof of the pre trib. And before the throne, there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal. 
and in the center and around the throne four living creatures full, full of eyes in front and behind so they were around the throne and um, that's what we just read in Zechariah said these are the four spirits of heaven going forth after standing before the Lord of the earth he rode upon a cherub and flew and sped upon the wings of the wind so this all happens at once because they, these are the horsemen or what are known as the four horsemen but they go with the with the horses And uh, and Jesus rides on one of them, which is the white horse. And that so that's the first four seals, which we know all this other stuff happens at the same time as this. So the whole seal, the whole scroll is opened at once, along with the first couple trumpets. He rode upon a cherub and flew and sped upon the wings of the wind. The wind, he makes his angels like winds and ministers a flame of fire. He made darkness his hiding place, his canopy around him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him passed his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. And that's what we see here. The first sounded and there was hail and fire. And the coals of fire is what we read here. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. That's the coals from the altar. And the hail, that's the same hail from Revelation 16. And huge hailstones, about a hundred pounds each, came down from heaven upon men. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hill, because this plague was extremely severe. From the brightness before him passed his thick clouds, hailstones, and coals of fire. And we read that the Antichrist at the end is going to be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. The Antichrist and his armies. And that's why when he comes at first... He's covered in the clouds, covered in the dark clouds, or else he would destroy everybody. Yahuwah also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And we read in John chapter 12, Jesus said, Now my soul has become troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it thundered. And others were saying an angel spoke to him. And we read in Revelation 10. And he cried out with a loud voice as when a lion roars. And when he had cried out, and this is a uh, Gabriel, but when he when he cried out, the seven peals of thunder uttered their voices, which is that's the voice of God. And we see this uh, all these connections uh, many many times with the thunder, lightning, uh, Revelation chapter four, out from the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne so at this time and as we also see in Psalm 18 um, all this happens he sent out his arrows and scattered them and lightning flashes in abundance and routed them and we see the arrows here in 
in Zechariah chapter 9. I'm going to start in verse 11. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, the new covenant, I have set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. That's from Sheol. Return to the stronghold, O prisoners who have the hope. Many to his kingdom. Those who hope in Jesus, hope in his salvation. This very day I am declaring that I will restore double to you. For I will bend Judah as my bow, and I will fill the bow with Ephraim. So Ephraim is the arrows. And I will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and I will make you like a warrior's sword. Then Yahuwah will appear over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning, and the Lord God will blow the, blow the trumpet and will march in the storm winds of the south. So that's when the trumpet blows. And all this happens. Psalm 77, 18. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Psalm 144, verse 6. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and confuse them. And so the lightning is connected to the arrows and also connected to 144. Because I believe the arrows... The bow and arrows, and God's weapon, that's 144,000 that we just read in Zechariah 9. And we also see the lightning uh, here in a few places. Like, we, like I said, Revelation 4, out from the throne come flashes of lightning, sounds, and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God, which is that, that fills the body of Christ. Because the lamps are also the churches. Revelation 8, verse 5. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. And lightning flashes in abundance and routed them. Then the channels of the water appeared, and the foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke, O Yahuwah, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Now here we see the rapture. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. And in many waters, we, of course, we see here in Revelation 17, and one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. And the waters, Revelation seventeen fifteen, And he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So it's saying, I will draw. He drew me out of many waters, out of many nations and people. It's a resurrection and rapture. Well, rapture more in particular. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. See, this is referring to the captivity. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but Yahuwah was my stay. He brought me forth also into a broad place, into his kingdom. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Hallelujah. Yahuwah has rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of Yahuwah, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his ordinances were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless with him, and kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, Yahuwah has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyes. So let's walk in his ways. Let's make sure we're right with him, fully. With the kind, you show yourself kind. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. With the pure, you show yourself pure. And with the crooked, you show yourself astute. But you save an afflicted people. 
For you saving afflicted people or humble people. It can also be translated humble. For but haughty eyes you abase. And that's what we read here in Luke 14, 11. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. For you save an afflicted people. But haughty eyes you abase. For you light my lamp. Yahuwah, my God, illumines my darkness. Hallelujah. For by you, I can run upon a troop. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. Hallelujah. As for God, His way is blameless. The word of Yahuwah is tried. He is a shield to all those who take refuge in Him. Hallelujah. For who is God but Yahuwah? And who is a rock except our God? The God who girds me with strength and makes my way blameless. He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. He trains my hand for battle so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. And this also seems to be a reference to the 144,000. You have also given me the shield of your salvation, the shield of faith, and your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. You enlarge my steps under me, and my feet have not slipped. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, and I did not turn back until they were consumed. Speaking of after the resurrection, after the rapture, 144,000. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, and did not turn back until they were consumed. I shattered them, so that they were not able to rise. They fell under my feet. For you have girded me with strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also made my enemies turn their backs to me, and I destroyed those who hated me. They cried for help, but there is none to save, even a Yahuwah, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I emptied them out as the mire of the streets. You have delivered me from the contentions of the people. You have placed me as head of the nations. A people whom I have not known serve me. As soon as they hear, they obey me. Foreigners submit to me. Foreigners fade away and come trembling out of their fortresses. And we read in Ezekiel thirty-four twenty-four. And now Yahuwah will be their God. And my servant David will be prince among them. For I, Yahuwah, have spoken. This is speaking about the millennial reign. Yahuwah lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation, the God who executes vengeance for me, and subdues people under me. We read in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32, Vengeance is mine, speaking, this is God speaking, and retribution. In due time their foot will slip, and the day of their calamity is near. And the impending things are hastening upon them. In Romans 12, never pay back evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. The God who executes vengeance for me and subdues people under me. He delivers me from my enemies. Surely you will lift me above those who rise against me. You rescue me from the violent man. Therefore I will give thanks to you among the nations, O Yahuwah. And I will sing praises to your name. Hallelujah. He gives great deliverance to his king. 
and shows loving kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Hallelujah. What a chapter. What a God. What a deliverance. Our God is amazing. Our God is above all. Above everything. And no one is going to stop his plan. Hallelujah. So let's be ready. Let's be right with him. Let's make sure our hearts are pure. Let's overcome all obstacles. And no matter what, even if we do have to go into this, into captivity, God delivers. And he's going to place our enemies under our feet. And we will destroy them. At least according to this. The tables will turn. But let's do his will in everything. Let's overcome. Let's be ready. Let's spread the gospel. Let's shine his light. Let's show his love in everything we do. Every thought. Let's take every thought captive to, to the obedience of Christ. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let's overcome. Let's be ready. Time is short. And we need to do everything we can to edify the body. Let's pray for each other. Strengthen each other. Bring more people to faith. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. The day of salvation is now. Today is the day of salvation. Don't waste your time. Jesus was prophesied about going back to the book of Genesis. And the odds that one person could fulfill even a few Bible prophecies is almost impossible. Jesus fulfilled over 300, proving himself to be who the Bible says he is. Proving himself to be the Savior, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom. And we're all sinners. We all fall short. And our sin results in death. So the only way to eternal life is to have our sins covered. To have our sins wiped away. And we can't do it ourselves. We can't earn our way to heaven. But it's through faith in Jesus. Jesus did live a perfect life. And in his perfection, he suffered and died for us, took on our punishment, made the sacrifice for us so that through faith, because we can't earn it ourselves, so through faith in him and what he did on the cross, we can receive that perfection. We can have our sins wiped away and be made right with God and live with him forever. And anyone that doesn't accept the free gift of God is going to be thrown, after judgment, thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death, permanent death of both body and soul. So choose life. Jesus loves you, and he wants to save you. It's life or death. Good versus evil. Pick your side. We're running out of time. We're living in the last days. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Shalom.